Have you ever felt two completely different things at the same time? I know I have. Sometimes feeling nervous and feeling excited can really feel like the same thing, right? But what about more complex emotions, like feeling joyful that it's the holidays and you'll get to spend more time with your family, but then also feeling the tension that has been separating you from them for some time now? In this video, we'll be exploring how God says we can navigate these feelings. I'm so excited for you to join me. Hi, my name is Chastity, and welcome to Community Christian Anywhere. Welcome to Community Christian Anywhere. My name is Chastity, and I am so glad you are joining us today. We are an online group of people who are committed to living out Jesus' command to love everyone always. I know that life can be hard sometimes, and we want to help with that. We are constantly looking for something in life to give us guidance, and eventually those things we find will fail us. But there is a God that we can put our trust in who will never let us down. I'm confident in that because no matter what you think about God, we believe He can't stop thinking about you. While we watch this video together today, you'll see a phone number that will stay on screen. If at any point during our time together, you feel God speaking to you and you wanna take a next step in your relationship with Him, go ahead and text that number. Our speaker today will reach out to you as soon as they are able. Maybe you need some advice or someone to talk to or you're interested in finding out how you can get involved with our community here. Text us and let us know. We are so happy to help. We want this experience to be more than just some content you consume, like a TV show or a movie, but more of a living, breathing community that you can actively engage with. We believe everyone has something to share and we wanna hear from you right now. If you are joining us on our live stream and you've never engaged in discussion with our community before, we want to offer you a $10 Grubhub gift card just for commenting the words, I'm hungry, in our chat or sending us a direct message with the words, I'm hungry. That's it. Seriously, that's how excited we are to hear from you. You don't even have to be joining us live to make this happen either. If you're watching on demand or on YouTube, text the words, I'm hungry, to our number that's on the screen, and you too can enjoy a free meal on us. If we're this excited to hear from you, imagine how much more excited God will be to hear from you today. And if you're with us all the time, we still wanna hear from you too. In fact, go ahead and get our discussion going by commenting in the chat what food you're craving right now. And while you guys are chatting, let's go ahead and get started with our video for today. This is one of the ornaments from the Christmas tree at my house. Christmas ornaments, they're a big deal in my family. My wife, my girls and I, we always decorate the tree together. And we pull out these boxes full of ornaments. Some are homemade, some are given to us, and they represent significant moments in our family's history. Some of them, they just bring back memories. And so for us, decorating our tree, it's almost like a stroll down memory lane of Christmas past. Right after Thanksgiving, we put on the Christmas music, we spend the afternoon working and laughing and remembering together. Well, if you're new to Community Christian Anywhere, my name's Jason and I'm one of the pastors here. If you wanna share some of your favorite Christmas traditions, text me at the number on the screen. I'd love to hear them. Or if there's anything that you'd like to ask or talk about during our gathering today, just text that number and I'll be in touch as soon as I can. Now, this ornament, it's unique among all the others that we have because it plays music. <laughs> and my wife always makes sure that she hits the button while she's hanging it up on the tree. And you'll probably recognize the song that it plays. Let's see. Now, I'll admit, that's not my favorite Christmas song. But I'll tell you this, Whenever we hang this ornament, and whenever I hear it playing that song, for me, it's a reminder to me. The Christmas or the Advent season is finally here. And for me and my family, it truly is the most wonderful time of the year. I mean, we look forward to it all year long. 
And I know the same is true for a lot of other families, and maybe it is for yours too. But what is it that makes Advent the most wonderful time of the year? Well, I'll tell you, I think part of the reason is just the anticipation that's packed into that season. In fact, that's what the word Advent really means. It's about looking forward to something that's coming and anticipating it with eager excitement. Now, as followers of Jesus, we know that this refers to God coming into the world as a baby, revealing himself to us. And we anticipate the celebration of Jesus' birth, and we also look forward to his coming again to redeem his creation. That's what makes Advent the most wonderful time of the year. But now as a kid, that wasn't exactly what I had in mind, in my heart, in my mind. That wasn't what I was set on. <laughs> Christmas was the most wonderful time of the year for me because of something else. It was the gifts and the food. In fact, I can remember by the time Christmas Eve would roll around when I was a kid, I was practically one big bundle of pent up energy. I mean, we'd all gather at my grandparents' house on Christmas Eve and we'd eat the most amazing dinner and desserts that you've ever tasted. And even before the dishes were cleared, me, my brother, my cousins, we were all sitting in the living room floor just waiting to tear into our gifts. And then when I got home, I could hardly fall asleep wondering, what would be under the tree in the morning when I woke up? And all that anticipation is what made Christmas the most wonderful time of the year for me way back then. Now, as an adult, the things I love and the things I look forward to, well, they've changed, obviously. But I still get filled with that sense of anticipation. But I'm also not insensitive to the reality that this may not be your experience at Christmas this year. Because what you're anticipating this Christmas what you've been through this year, I mean, what we've all been through, it's not making this the most wonderful time of the year. I recently heard a statement from a professor uh, at Fordham University who specializes in mental health, and they were talking about this time of year, and here's what she said. She said, people think they're supposed to be happy during the holidays. This is supposed to be a time of sharing with your family, of positive relationships, of celebration, of joy. Many people, though, feel alienated because they're just not in that space. And that idealized image of the holidays, it only makes us feel these things more acutely. Even if one gets beyond the shoulds attached to Advent, she said, there still remains a stark reality that something has been lost. Now going through the year that we've just been through with people dying in a global pandemic, quarantines, restrictions disrupting our lives and our ability to be with those that we love, a strained economy with many people losing their jobs, and the most divisive election season we've ever seen. I mean, the only thing that's wonderful about this time of year is that it's almost over. But let's be real for a minute. Just because you change the number on the calendar in a couple of weeks doesn't mean everything magically gets better. So if your anticipation surrounding Advent it's a little lacking this year, I get it. And you're not alone in feeling that way. You've always been told that Christmas is a season of good news. And you may still be holding on to that thought, but the truth for you may be that this Christmas is a season of good news mixed with bad news. A season of mixed emotions, mixed messages. In fact, have you ever had someone approach you with that old worn out line that says, hey, I've got good news and I've got bad news. Which one you wanna hear first? I hate that line. I don't even know why we say it because it always leaves you with that dreadful feeling in the pit of your stomach. The good news, when it comes, never quite overpowers the bad news, right? And I don't know what you're experiencing this Christmas, but maybe that's sort of how you feel. There's this good news that surrounds Christmas. Peace on earth, goodwill toward men. God is with us, but in the middle, right where you are, the news isn't all that good. At least it doesn't feel that way. Well, today, I wanna to focus on the story of one of the main characters of that very first Christmas, because that was exactly what he experienced, a good news, bad news moment. And I don't think we often give him quite enough credit for how well he persevered in that moment. Today, we're gonna look at the first Christmas through the eyes of Joseph. This is how Jesus the Messiah was born. His mother Mary was engaged to be married to Joseph. 
But before the marriage took place, while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. Joseph, to whom she was engaged, was a righteous man and did not want to disgrace her publicly. So he decided to break the engagement quietly. As he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, the angel said, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit, and she will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All of this occurred to fulfill the Lord's message through his prophet. Look, the virgin will conceive a child, she will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph woke up, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded and took Mary as his wife, but he did not have sexual relations with her until her son was born. And Joseph named him Jesus. Joseph was a young man with his entire future out in front of him. He's got everything a guy his age could really want. He comes from a good, well-respected family. He's been trained as a carpenter, so his career is pretty set. Now, he won't be a rich man, but he's got a way to provide for his family. And speaking of family, that's all looking good for Joseph, too. He's engaged to marry a beautiful girl named Mary, and the wedding is not too far away. Joseph has every reason to be optimistic about his future. And then one day, Mary comes over for a visit. Now, maybe she just wants to discuss wedding plans or just to spend some time with her fiance, but that look on her face tells Joseph that something else is going on. And then Mary says those dreaded words, Joseph, I've got good news, but I got some bad news. Now, the good news is I'm having a baby. The bad news is it's not yours. But see now, Joseph, he didn't need to hear that. He already knew. In fact, what Joseph is thinking is, so where's the good news in any of that? And in a moment, Joseph's good news future, all the hope and the promise that he was looking forward to has now been mixed with this bad news. And he has to make the biggest decision of his young life. See, in Joseph's time and in his culture, to be engaged, to be married, it was just as serious and binding as a legal marriage. So you couldn't just break up and walk away. And if you were unfaithful in an engagement, it was considered adultery. And in that culture, adultery was punishable by the law and the punishment in the law was death. So Joseph has two choices. Divorce Mary quietly and try to save his own reputation and maybe hers, or turn her over to the authorities, which probably cost Mary her life along with her babies. Joseph is stuck between a good news, bad news situation, and to him, it must have felt like there was just no way out. Now, I just want to pause right here, and I want to ask you something. Do you feel like you're stuck this Christmas season, caught between a time of wonder, hope, promise, and this feeling of fear, dread, or hopelessness? If you are, can I just remind you of something? You're not alone. There is a God who is with you, who cares for you, and there are people who do too. In fact, text me right now, and I promise I'll respond, and I'll do whatever I can to help. Or maybe you know someone who feels stuck this Christmas, and right now God is bringing them to your mind. He's calling you to reach out to them, to remind them that they are not alone. Maybe you could send them a text right now to encourage them and remind them that God's with them, and so are you. Well, Joseph wasn't alone in the midst of this bad news, but I imagine it must have felt like it to him. He's wondering to himself, did I misjudge this woman that I'm about to marry? Was she lying to me the whole time? Did I ever really know her? I mean, can you imagine the confusion and the pain that he must have felt? And the scriptures tell us that Joseph, who was a righteous man, decided he, he was just gonna break the engagement with Mary real quietly. But for whatever reason, before he makes it official, Joseph decides to go home and sleep on it. And in the middle of what was probably the most sleepless night of his life, God shows up in a dream. And God turns Joseph's bad news into good news. Joseph, son of David, 
Do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit. And she will have a son, and you're to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. And with those words, God is showing mercy to Joseph in the midst of his darkness and his hurt and his confusion. He's offering him a second chance. It's really an invitation to trust God and to follow him to accomplish the plan that God had been working out for this world from the moment he created it. And that's exactly what mercy is. It's giving someone the benefit of the doubt. It's giving them a second chance. It's not giving them what you think they deserve, but leaning in their direction with kindness and forgiveness. That's what God is doing for Joseph. I can just imagine that when Mary first broke that news to Joseph, she told him everything that had happened to her. She told him about the angel, the wonderful news that God had chosen her to carry the child who was the Messiah, the savior of the world, and that Joseph had been chosen too. God was choosing Joseph to raise his own son and to be a part of his plan. But when Joseph first heard that news, he just couldn't wrap his head around it. He couldn't believe it. And even though he was planning to say no and to walk away and start his life over and try to get back to that hopeful future that he'd been looking forward to, God stepped in and he gave Joseph another chance. He was merciful to Joseph. And this time, Joseph accepted the invitation. He took full advantage of his second chance and he followed God into a different future. He became a husband to Mary. He followed through with the wedding. He became a father to the Son of God and he took his role seriously. I often wonder if we even give Joseph enough credit for what he does through the rest of that story. Think about it, Joseph takes Mary as his wife and when her pregnancy starts to show and the neighbors start to do the math and there's most likely gossip and rumors in the community, but Joseph, he endures them all. He leads Mary, nine months pregnant, up into the mountains to, to Bethlehem and he's, he's holding her hand as she gives birth that night. Later, he risks his life he helps his family escape to Egypt because there's an evil king murdering children to try and keep Jesus from growing up. And he protects them as they live as refugees in a foreign land. Then Joseph leads them back to their hometown. He finds work, he supports them. He raises Jesus just like he was his own. See, the mercy that God showed Joseph changed his life. Joseph got this second chance and he didn't waste it. In fact, Mercy changed Joseph so much that it's what led him to give that same mercy to Mary. He gave her a second chance when he chose to believe her and to build a life with her. Because see, that's what mercy does to us. When you've experienced the kindness and mercy of God, when you've been given a second chance and you recognize that it was not at all what you deserved, it transforms you into a person of mercy. Mercy was also the pathway that led Joseph out of darkness into light. See, when Joseph went to bed that night, it was most likely the darkest time in his life. His certain bright future had become the complete opposite. He had no idea where he was headed, and it all looked bleak and dark and uncertain. And then the dream happened, and the angel spoke, and everything changed. Joseph received God's merciful second chance, and it was that mercy that led Joseph out of his dark night. He gave that same mercy to Mary, to his new family, and it led him the rest of the way, all the way to the end of his life. The moment when the tender, loving mercy of God was most clearly seen was the moment when Jesus laid down his life for sinful people like you and me on the cross. Though this was not something we deserved, the loving mercy of God was too powerful to leave us in our brokenness. Jesus went to the cross on our behalf, giving us the gift of his body and blood to offer new life and freedom forever. Every week, we take time out of our gatherings to remember this gift of mercy in the way Jesus asked us to by taking the emblems of bread and juice to remember his body and blood given for us. We call this time communion. And if you're prepared to take communion today, please use whatever emblems you have on hand. It could be a cracker and juice or even a piece of bread and water. The symbols don't matter as much as who you are remembering. But if you're here and you're not sure you believe all this, 
I invite you to use this time to reflect on all you've heard today. Is it possible that there is a God who offers you a life better than you deserve or could imagine through His loving mercy? Maybe reach out to talk to us about that through text or reach out to God in prayer. I believe if you seek God, He will make Himself real to you. But for followers of Jesus right now, let's take the bread. This is the body of Jesus, given for you to forgive your sins and offer you new life. Let's eat and remember. And now the cup. This is the blood of Christ poured out to make new agreement between God and people, life forever in his kingdom. Let's drink and remember. For whenever we eat this bread and drink this cup, we announce the love and mercy of God that has defeated sin and death in Jesus. Amen. In the next four or five days, many of you will be gathering together with your family or your friends. Meals are going to be shared. Gifts will be exchanged. But for some of you, those gatherings won't be very easy for you. Maybe because there'll be someone in that room who's become difficult for you to be around. And there's just that awkward tension there that you'd rather just avoid. Or maybe it's gonna be difficult for you because there's someone missing from that gathering, whether it was their decision or maybe it was yours. So this week before Christmas, can I just remind you of something? This year, it's been really hard on all of us. I mean, 2020 has created distance between us and the ones we love in all kinds of ways. Everybody's world has been disrupted and we all kind of feel off balance. Whether you're a student and your school year has been up and down and back and forth and online and in person, or you're a parent who's been trying to figure out work and daycare and school for your kids, or if your workplace is just in transition, trying to figure out what's coming next in our economy, or if your candidate lost, or if your candidate won and you don't know what's going on in our country right now, or what's happening next with COVID. Is it getting worse? Is it getting better? What if I get it? What if someone I love gets it? And here's all I'm trying to say. Don't you think we all could use a little bit of mercy? Couldn't we all just use a second chance? What if we all just reached out to the people in our lives that have become distant or maybe awkward and we just said, hey, can we just hit the reset button? Can we start over this Christmas? Can we walk forward into the new year with a little bit of love and compassion and service toward one another. And I know there have been a lot of things said and a lot of things done, but isn't it dark enough? Don't you think that mercy might be the path that leads us out of all this darkness and into the light? Because see, that's what God did for Joseph. He showed him mercy, a second chance. And Joseph took that path and it led him and it led his entire family out of darkness into the light. And think about what hung in the balance right there. I mean, what if he hadn't chosen that way? I mean, what if Joseph hadn't followed the way of mercy? What if he never extended the mercy God gave to him to Mary? See, Joseph choosing the path of mercy, it's what led to you and me receiving the mercy of God shown in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. So, who is it that could use some mercy from you this Christmas? Who could you serve? Who could you love? Who could be given a second chance from you? And maybe that's as simple as you walking across a room or sending a text message, making a phone call. Maybe it's a gift that you give that will be just totally unexpected. Maybe it's a word, a hug. Maybe it's showing up to a place that no one is expecting you to be. Whatever it looks like for you, will you show someone else the mercy that has been shown to you from your Heavenly Father? And we here at Community Christian Anywhere, we want to help you do that. Today, we're launching a virtual experience that we're calling Christmas Anywhere. And it's designed for you to share with your friends and your loved ones who need to hear the message of mercy and love that God has shown us in the birth of Jesus. Uh, this experience is available right now on our website, cccanywhere.com. Just click on the Christmas Anywhere link, 
we hope you'll share this experience either in a physical or virtual gathering with someone this week. You can watch these in person with someone or through a virtual watch party on Facebook. And to help you get the most out of this experience, we're providing resources for you to share with your friends and family who will be watching with you. If you want to receive one of our Christmas Anywhere boxes, fill out the form on the Christmas Anywhere page. We'll prepare the box for you, and we'll let you know when it's ready to be picked up from our church offices in Coweta County. And if you don't live local here in Coweta County, we'll mail the box to you. And listen, if you have any questions or if you need any help from us, remember, you can always just text us at the number on the screen. Now, to wrap things up today, we're going to sing what actually might be my favorite Christmas song of all time. It's a song that reminds us that even in a chaotic world where we find ourselves lost in sin, Jesus came. And when he did, he brought mercy and love. I hope you and your family have a very Merry Christmas this year. Stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appeared in the soul felt.
all relationships experience change over time, it's up to us to embrace those changes, see beyond the disagreements we may have, and look deeper to the person in front of us that Jesus thought was worth dying for. After all, don't we want others to do the same for us? Maybe you can take the first step in a relationship you have that may not be ideal right now. Who is it that you can show mercy to this holiday season? We all need help sometimes figuring out these kinds of next steps. And that's something we would love to do together. The best way to get in touch with us is by joining our community Facebook page. If you visit our website at cccanywhere.com and click on the option that says join our Facebook group, it will take you to our Community Christian Anywhere Facebook page, where you can click the join group button. We would absolutely love for you to be part of our community, and I hope to see you there. And also, while you're visiting with us on cccanywhere.com, you will see other resources that you can check out to get better connected with us and with God. There are even resources there that are made specifically for your children to help them connect with God on their level. You'll also see ways that you can support our church financially, not because we need your money, but because part of following Jesus is supporting the church to take on God's mission of loving and taking care of people in our community and across the world. So sometimes that means we need to give back a little bit of what we've been given. Like I mentioned before, we want this to be more than just content you consume, but a community that you can grow in, share with, and be a part of. And so, I hope just watching this right now isn't the most experience you'll have with us. I hope you'll join our community page and engage with us via chat. But most of all, I just hope we'll see you here again. We're gonna leave our chat open for about five more minutes and put up a few discussion questions related to our topic today to get the conversation rolling. We'd really love to hear from you, even if it's just a quick hello. Thanks for joining us today, and we hope to hear from you soon. And remember, no matter what you think about God, we believe He can't stop thinking about you.